All right, we have made it through our tutorials on how to capture from tape, and now we're going to take a look at uh, the tapeless cameras that are so prolific these days. Now, it would be almost impossible for me to address every type of camera that is out there today, and each one might have its own little peculiar method of connecting to your computer and transferring the media from your camera to the hard drive of your computer. But this is probably something that you have already figured out. If you've had your camera for a while, you must have probably already figured out how to get media from the camera to at least a hard drive uh, on your computer because you'll probably have had to back up that media at some point. I've met people who have you know, purchased a digital camera, whether it's a still camera or a video camera, and they have filled up their camera but don't know what to do with it then. You know, they, they are able to see the pictures at the back of their camera, but they have no idea about how to save those pictures or share those pictures or even get prints from those pictures. <laughs> but uh, if you take a look at your camera manual, if you haven't quite figured that out yet, uh, it'll show you in detail there how to transfer your media from your camera to your computer or at least to a hard drive that's connected to your computer. Or another uh, option for many cameras that are saving the data, saving the pictures or video to a small SD card that is often attached to many of these cameras, what you can do is take that little card out of your camera and plug it into what's called a card reader. And this card reader is usually something that you can attach to your computer through a USB connection and save it either directly to the hard drive, your C drive, or to a external drive that's already attached to your computer. So if you haven't quite figured out how to do either of those things, that would maybe be the first step that you should probably do. I know over the last five or six years, I've had a variety of different cameras, ranging from palm quarters to GoPros to DSLR cameras, and each one connects usually these days with a USB cable, but also have uh, often an SD card that you can remove from the actual camera and plug into a card reader. And if you haven't purchased a card reader yet, that's a, that's a good investment to make. They're not expensive, about $30 or $40. If you are just now purchasing one, I would recommend getting a USB 3 card reader. And if you have uh, cards that uh, are rated at a high speed and can connect to a USB 3 input into your computer and have another, you know, portable drive that is USB 3, you will be able to transfer your media very quickly using USB 3. Well, there are several approaches that we could recommend uh, when you're bringing media in like this to your uh, EDIUS project. Uh, since version 6.0, there is a new tool in EDIUS called the Source Browser. And over the next few tutorials, we are going to become quite familiar with the source browser as we discover how to bring in media from CDs and DVDs. Also, um, we'll show you how to bring in XF material. And uh, if you attach a camera to your computer, it will most likely show up here in the source browser. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to take my little palm quarter, uh, my Panasonic, I guess I should call it a camcorder, not a palm quarter. That's kind of maybe derogatory. I don't know. I'm going to turn my camera on, first of all, and plug it in using the cable that came with the camera, a USB cable that has just a small USB at one end and a regular USB at the other end and connect it to my camera. Now, when I do connect the cable, um, I notice on my screen that I have to actually touch an option here that says PC. And then after I do that, it'll shake hands with my computer and actually shows up just as if it is a hard drive. This camera actually um, does have a, a real hard drive inside the camera. And that's where most of my media is shot uh, or sent to when I shoot. And we could open it just like a hard drive. 
Uh, but before we do that, we should notice, uh, let me close this. We should notice that uh, it will show up here in the source browser as well. And here it shows up under removable media. Uh, we see that uh, if we checked our Windows Explorer, it does have the same hard drive designation F. And if we wanted to, we could click on, on this and Edius would examine the hard drive of my uh, camera and uh, show me thumbnails of each of the media clips that are on the hard drive of my camera. And then I could choose which uh, thumbnails, some, which clips I want to bring in and transfer them to my project. But let's cancel out of that because it is kind of a rare event that um, I would sit down to start a project and not have any of this media already saved on a hard drive. When I'm shooting out in the field, uh, I often or almost every night will back up the media that I've shot that day. And uh, so, for example, this is the hard drive that I used when I went to Myanmar. And all of my Canon 6D shots are saved to this hard drive, but also backed up to a second hard drive. So if anything should ever happen to the first hard drive that I saved all my media to every night, then I would always have that backup to go to. Uh, in addition to the 6D, I also have all of the files uh, saved already from that shoot uh, that I uh, took with my Handycam. They're already on that hard drive that we are now using as our project drive. And so when I start a project, rather than go back to the original camera source, uh, I just work with the media that's already been transferred to my hard drives. In fact, uh, in the case of the Canon 6D, um, every night after I've backed it up to two hard drives, I format the cards. So there would never be any opportunity to go back to the camera and use our source browser to bring in our media that way. And so it just makes sense that uh, you would... Uh, uh, use a different method to bring in the media. Now, you might remember from our very first tutorial that we did bring in the very first card into our project. Um, let's maybe, just to make this less confusing, let's uh, start with a clean slate. We're going to delete everything off of our timeline, and we are going to delete all of the clips from our bin. Uh, when we hit the delete key like that, we're not actually deleting them from the hard drive. No worries there. We're just removing them from the, the project. All of these temple shots that we chose, select all, control A, hit the delete button and they're gone. And uh, right now all we have left is the actual sequence, the main program sequence is showing up in the root folder, the root bin. I usually like to create a folder called sequences just to keep all of the sequences separate in their own folder. So now we don't have any temple shots. We could actually get rid of that. <clears throat> and uh, I like to keep a trash folder, and I'll explain why in a minute. So let's start over again, as though it's a, f a brand new project. And let's import some media using the tool that's found within the bin window itself. And uh, the one to go for is this little icon of a folder that has the up arrow. And as you hover over it, it says add clip. And when you click on this folder, what it really does is open up a, a window that, that is actually communicating with Windows Explorer. As you um, click on the down arrow here, you will see what looks very familiar as if you're working with a Windows uh, Explorer. And here you can navigate to the hard drive that uh, has the media that you have transferred from your cameras. And here we have not only the handy cam shots that I've already transferred in the field, but also all of the shots that I took with my Canon 6D. And uh, so let's click on that. And uh, while I was in the field, I saved each card with its own separate number, but then near the end of the shoot, I just transferred all of the media to one folder, the video folder. So what we have here is all of the clips that I shot over the course of a week or two uh, in one folder. 
And we could just select all with a control A and hit the open key, and that would import all of the clips that I shot with my Canon 6D uh, all in one sweep, all in one stroke, and, and import them into the project. But before we do that, I want to point something out that you should probably consider before you import media. Let's maybe just select five or six shots here, the first row. And notice down here, uh, this box that says transfer to project folder. You'll need to decide for yourself whether or not you want to do this, whether you want to have this checked or unchecked. What happens if we have it checked and hit the import or the open button to import our clips is that not only uh, will we be importing these clips from our hard drive, but we are going to be transferring these clips to another folder, actually copying these clips to another folder that's inside our project folder. If we were to go to our hard drive right now and take a look um, at uh, Edius Projects, Myanmar, and check out the transferred folder, we will see that all of these clips have now been copied from uh, the folder that had all of our 6D shots. Now they are copied and brought in to a folder called transferred that's inside our project folder uh, for this project. So what you're really doing uh, then is having two sets of clips. If we were to do this, we would have um, not only all of our clips would be here under the Canon 6D folder, all under video, but a copy of them would now be placed under uh, project uh, folder, under transferred. So you might uh, want to stop and think whether or not you want to have that box checked. There are certain advantages, certain disadvantages of doing that. Number one, it takes a lot longer to import your media. Uh, if you're in a, a crunch deadline, you might not want to have that box checked because it is actually going to take a while to actually copy those clips from uh, one folder to another. It's not like it's transferring them or moving them. That wouldn't take hardly any time at all, but it's actually physically making a, a copy of every one of those files and placing them in the new folder. Well, you might be asking, what's the advantage of having our clips inside the project folder? Well, one advantage, of course, is if you are importing media from maybe 10 different drives, you know, you might have your music on one drive, you might have your narration on another drive, you might have some stock footage, like I've been to Myanmar several other times, I have some stock footage that are on two or three different drives, and if I want to bring that media in to this project, it is probably a good idea that I use this method of transferring that media to the project folder. And that way, everything that is associated with this project is all going to be collected onto one hard drive. And that's a good idea because uh, once the project is finished, you can just archive that hard drive, you know, uh, maybe even back it up once and, uh, and, and keep that hard drive in a safe place so that whenever you have to update the project, maybe make a few changes, your client calls you up, I, I need to, I love the video, but it's kind of getting outdated, we need to make a few changes. Well, you can just pull that one hard drive down off the shelf and be able to uh, have all of the media online. You're not having to search over five or six drives trying to collect the media again. And so in that case, what I might do is uh, when I'm importing the media that is already on the same drive as the project, I might not necessarily have this box checked. I don't need a second copy of that media necessarily. But when I am bringing in stock media that I want to use in this project from maybe two or three different drives, I believe that it's a good idea to have that box checked so that you will have everything together on one drive. Okay, now one other uh, thing that I might point out that uh, is only available if you do transfer and make a copy of your media to your project folder. Let me just bring in another 
five or six here that doesn't have this option of transfer to project folder. You see how quickly they came in this time. If we compare these two clips, let's just do a right click on this clip. We'll notice that uh, this option down here to delete file is grayed out. EDIUS designers have set this up to kind of force people into the habit of collecting all of the media and putting it inside the project folder. And they will no longer allow you to delete files right from your bin unless it's inside the project. If we were to take a look at uh, one of these clips that's been transferred to the project, we'll see that now the delete file is no longer grayed out. And uh, the advantage that I find of, of having this option is that as I'm working with a project, every day I will be looking at clips and as I go through them, I scan through them, I say, well, you know, <laughs> That one was out of focus. It, it didn't show anything that I'll ever use. I'm going to drop that in the trash bin. So I'll drop it in the trash bin. And at the end of the day, I'll empty the trash and that will clean up room on my hard drive. However, if the clips that I have placed in my trash bin are coming from somewhere outside of the project folder, then when I go to delete my 100 clips to kind of clean up my hard drive, I'm not going to have that option. And I would have to actually go in and open the folder and try and find every one of those clips that I don't want if I want to uh, you know, make more room on my hard drive. And so you can see that this is one of the ways that uh, Grass Valley or the designers of EDIUS are trying to encourage people to get into the habit, get into the practice of when you're importing media to have that box checked to transfer uh, everything to the project folder. And if you're worried about, um, you know, ha uh, having this redundancy of having two sets of clips on uh, one hard drive, once you have transferred all of the media to your project, you could go into your hard drive and, uh, you know, go to the folder where the actual media is and delete that so it frees up room on your hard drive. Uh, I would only do this if you have your media backed up on a separate hard drive, but that's one way that you could, uh, you know, clean up your hard drive, make more room on your hard drive. So there are the pros and cons of having your media inside your project drive, and uh, we'll leave it up to you to decide whether or not you want to have that little box checked before you uh, import your media. I think for this project, I'm actually going to do that. Uh, this is actually the this is kind of a first for me. I've always just imported the media directly from the hard drive itself and not chosen this box. But uh, just perhaps as an experiment for my own interest, uh, I'm gonna for this particular project that we're gonna work on, I'm gonna keep that box checked and import all of this media from Burma. Uh, in a way that will copy them the files over to my project folder. You'll see that it comes in what what looks like it comes in quite fast, almost as fast as if I had to have chosen the option without the box. And you might think, oh, that's not that much different. But then you'll see that uh, once they are in the bin, then it does actually go through the process of copying each clip to the project folder, and that can take some time. But uh, let's just let that roll, and I think that for now, that that does it for importing media from tapeless cameras, and I think that we could also add importing media from hard drives. I was gonna do a separate tutorial on that, but I think we've kinda covered all of the principles of what you need to know in order to import media from hard drives. And I might just summarize that uh, when you do bring in media from other hard drives, something separate from your project drive, then I would highly recommend that you use that box so that you are collecting all of your media from different hard drives into that one project folder. Okay, but for now, I believe that does it for importing media.